Guys, this is Caleb King of thecalebking.com. You're here at C2E2, uh, and I just want you to say, hey, subscribe to Raise Chaos. Raise Chaos. You've made it back to this channel and it is Wednesday again! It's Wednesday again and it keeps happening! And what is wobbling on this thing? Something is wobbling on my stick. And I can't tell where it is. Ah, I think it's the base. <laughs> Are you having trouble? Do you need to lay down? Let's let you lay down because uh, you get in the way anyway. <laughs> So, what covered in rays get? Is it another? It is another, because, <laughs> yes, they, they tend to repeat themselves quite a bit on this. This is Daredevil number one. <laughs> and I just did a Daredevil number one not long ago, but this one's different. <laughs> I believe this is volume four. Um, uh, the one I did previous was volume two. Um, that one was written by Kevin Smith. This one is written by Mark Wade, and uh, yeah, Daredevil's had some good wet, good uh, writers because Mark Wade is one of the best out there. Um, he's one of my all-time favorites, um, and yeah, it's very hard for Ray's to put somebody in his all-time favorites as far as uh, comic book writing. Um, it's primarily been um, Alan Moore, Neil Gaiman, Frank Miller. For the longest time and Mark Wade kind of creeped in there um, after I sat and read uh, like Kingdom Come and some of the other uh, massive works that he's done because he's done great Superman stories he's done he's done a, a little bit of everything he ran the I mean <laughs> almost made an unintended pun, pun he wrote the flash for a long time I almost said he had a very long run run with flash but uh, he did he kind of brought uh, the Wally West fr Flash and kind of defined him um, when uh, nobody else did. Um, he, he really kind of defined him to show the differences between him and uh, Barry Allen. Um, but uh, this is his Daredevil run, which uh, I will admit I have yet to read. Um, but that's the beauty of trade paperbacks. You can always get caught up on things if you, uh, that you're interested in. And uh, this is a blacklight cover um, meant to emphasize his, uh, his extra senses. Um, they've got his whole, the whole, I, the, the whole thing is just the uh, words showing uh, the action, um, him being blind. You can see what he's hearing. Um, got the wig, big whoosh on the, on the, uh, on the uh, little area of smoke underneath him. Uh, the color is obviously different, um, emphasizing that he really can't tell the difference and uh, really lends itself well to a black light interpretation. Um, like I said, this came out in 2014, so it's not terribly old. Um, sh relatively easy to ca catch up on and I don't know, since I haven't read this story, I really don't know what to talk about other than Daredevil, but I just kind of went into that on the other one, uh, in the uh, Kevin Smith Daredevil number one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Daredevil was a very strong character. As I mentioned in that, the first volume one actually lent over 300 issues um, 
of that, and it, they, they they pumped that well till till it ran dry, before they really tried to revamp him, and uh, he he just uh, with his appearance in uh, in the, uh, the the first the Netflix uh, Daredevil series, um, and uh, combined with uh, Kevin Smith's uh, reinterpretation of it, later interpretation of it. Um, there was just really a lot of, uh, of interest in, uh, helping define Daredevil, um, because being a blind character, uh, he's already got, uh, one interesting factor to him, and then, uh, learning more about his history, um, it's best, as far as this original series, uh, the best is to be able to get condensed versions, um, because, once Frank Miller, ah, I mentioned Frank Miller. Once Frank Miller got a hold of Daredevil and get, did the whole uh, uh, revamping of his origin, um, that's really what gave Daredevil something to cling on to, or get, gave you something to cling on to with Daredevil. And uh, once he left, nobody really w knew what to do with him after that. And essentially, it, it took a while for people to remember Daredevil and go back to him. Um, uh, a good a good example of how detached everybody was from Daredevil um, was the fact that uh, uh, in the in, when the Incredible Hulk was doing TV movies, they actually had one, the trial of the Incredible Hulk. Uh, Matt Murdock is actually his lawyer, and uh, he's basically dre dressed as a black ninja, and that was supposed to be a pilot for a new Daredevil series, but like there was not enough interest. They couldn't generate the interest for Daredevil from that series. Um, everybody else was looking at the big Green Hulk and Stan Lee in the jury box. Um, yeah, there was plenty of stuff to outshine because the Daredevil they had wasn't that strong. Because they really, I mean, they gave the character and they just, they, uh, it was one of those things where they, I think they were trying, kind of hoping that the uh, TV version of Daredevil would help define him a little bit more. Um, and Marvel's done that m on multiple occasions where they have taken something from a TV, uh, TV adaptation. Um, uh, Captain America riding a motorcycle, that was part of, uh, that came from two, uh, Captain America made for TV movies, um, where you had a, a Captain America who was riding a motorcycle, had a completely different origin, and he was actually a, a traveling artist. And they incorporated that later to where Captain America was actually drawing uh, his co his own comic book at one point in the Marvel Universe. And they kept that even all the way up into the movies where the, you, they show that Steve Rogers liked to sketch and, and draw. Um, all that came from a TV series. Um, and comics do, do that where they will take what they've done in a other media adaptation quite a bit. Um, if you look at what the TV or what the radio series uh, gave to Superman, you'll be really surprised at how much of that like first appeared in in the radio show. Um, but now I'm completely slipping back into DC, so so I should probably go ahead and let you know that you can check out this and all the uh, the comic book covers that Ray's has collected in the <laughs> playlist that he has for them. Um, and yeah, you can check out the old ones, the older ones, ones you may have missed, because um, Ray's goes into it. Ray's talks and talks and talks. <laughs> you know he does. But I'm going to go ahead and get out of here now, so I hope you have a great day, and never forget that life is full of odd moments, and you never know when you're going to be defined.